All right guys, Coach Tom here. Today is lesson one on the forehand. All right, we're gonna teach you very basically, very simply how to hit a beginner, easy peasy, I've never hit the ball before forehand. We're starting here on the service line. I'm gonna show you how to hit the shot, give you a few pointers on how to make it a little easier for you, and then give you some ways you can practice it, as well as a little bit of a test that will kind of give you the, uh, the idea of whether or not you're ready to back up and uh, take on lesson number two. Okay, so first you guys, a couple of things about the theory behind um, really kind of how I teach and what I teach and what I think is important out here. It's really obviously important that we all know how to hit these shots and, and, and know how to hit our forehands and our backhands and whatnot. Um, but really what's more important to me is that you guys are able to keep the ball in play. Um, a lot of players you see, you know, they'll come out and they'll try to hit the ball hard, they'll try to have pinpoint accuracy with their placement. And really the truth of the matter is that what matters on the court is getting the ball in, okay? Um, there's a term called unforced errors, uh, or an unforced error, and if you ever watch tennis on TV, you'll see that they track that. It's one of the big stats that they track, and what that is is basically you hit the ball to me, and I'm not able to hit it back. There's really no reason you didn't hit it hard, you didn't place it well. Um, the only reason I miss is because I just missed, and that's an unforced error, and that really, at the level that we play at, that's really what causes um, most people to lose matches. Most people don't win matches at our, at our level, we actually lose matches. Okay, so one of the things we really want to work on is reducing our unforced errors. That term's in our terminology section. If you don't know what it is, it basically just means you're missing shots you shouldn't miss. But that's a huge thing out here. And that's why we're starting up here on the service lines. We want to build some confidence, build some comfort before we start backing up all the way to the back of the court. So the forehand, you guys, it's the shot you're gonna hit on your dominant side. So if you're right-handed, it's on your right side. If you're left-handed, it's on your left side. It's really, really as simple as that. Um, it is probably the most common shot you're gonna hit in tennis, the forehand ground stroke. There's also forehand volleys, um, but the forehand ground stroke is probably the most common shot you're gonna hit in tennis. There are two pieces to the forehand, okay? There's two pieces to every ground stroke, really, and it's the backswing and the follow-through. Um, again, it's backswing and follow through. Those are the two big pieces you're going to have to every single swing that you make out here. And the key is, at least in, in, in my opinion, the key is making sure that that backswing is smaller than your forward swing. Okay? A lot of people will come out and they'll take this big, huge backswing and then try to stop their racket as they're swinging. And all that does is decelerate your racket head as it's making impact with the ball. And that's not good. We want to actually accelerate or accelerate the racket head as it makes impact with the ball. So backswing and follow through, making sure that the backswing is actually smaller than the follow through. So those are the two main pieces that you're gonna have. Try to think of like the backswing as almost your power gauge and the follow through as your directional control. So if I'm going back, the further back I go, the more power I'm gonna have, which also means the less control I'm gonna have. And then the follow through is the direction that I'm gonna push that ball forward. So if I, if I follow through, you know, if I take a backswing here and I follow through across my body, well, that ball is probably going to go across. If I take a backswing here and I follow through forwards, that ball is going to go forwards. So in terms of holding the racket, it's obviously a pretty important piece of this. Um, I want you guys to hold that racket right down here on the end, okay? Hold it down as, as far as you can on the bottom of the racket. Don't doesn't need to be dangling off the edge. I'll see if I can come in nice and close here. You don't need to be hanging off the edge, right? but hold it down at the bottom of the racket. I don't want you guys holding it up here because when we get into our backhands, we actually are gonna hit a two-handed backhand. And if I've got my hand up here, that's, that's upside down. We actually need right hand on the bottom, left hand on the top. So make sure that you're holding the racket on the bottom of your grip, okay? In terms of string position, that's the next piece. String position, I'm gonna look in this camera over here, but string position really comes down to where your strings are in terms of the flight of the ball, right? So this straight up and down, this would be square. Okay, the ball's traveling this way. So this would be square. If I lean it back a little bit, that means it's open. If I lean it forwards a little bit, that means it's closed. Okay. You guys are gonna notice that I'm gonna actually change, right? My hand stays in the same position. And then I actually turn the racket, okay? I'm not just flipping my hand. That's not gonna work out, okay? 
So make sure that when you guys change that grip, when you change your string position, that you're actually moving the racket in your hand. You're not just flipping your hand around, okay? So let's actually just get into the shot. It's really basic, it's three pieces. It's a turn, a step, and a swing. And that's really all we wanna do. And that's gonna go with us pretty much for the entirety of our, of our tennis career. There are some variations, there are some little pieces we add here and there, but it's really turn, step, swing, okay? So really, it just looks like this. I'm gonna get myself set up and ready to go. I'm gonna have a small turn, a little step, and a swing, okay? those pieces are going to get bigger and the, the whole thing that what's what's kind of cool about this little series here is that yes we're starting here on the service line lesson two will back up to about three quarter court and then lesson three will be all the way back on the baseline but that turn step swing that that piece those three pieces it's all going to stay almost exactly the same it's just going to get a little bit bigger as we back up okay so let's just see how this looks it's really basic it's a turn a step and a swing if you notice my strings are open because I want that ball to go up. If my strings are down, the ball's gonna go down. That doesn't do me any good, that <laughs> negates in a way, right? So open strings, okay? Remember, move your racket, not just flipping your hand. And let's take a look. Turn, step, swing. It's really, really guys, it's as simple as that. And the smaller you keep that swing, the smaller you keep that backswing, the better result you're gonna have. You don't wanna have your racket moving all over the place and a ball coming at you. It, it just gets too confusing. There's too many pieces. So keep it small, keep it simple, okay? Turn, step, swing. That's it. Notice my eyes stay down on the ball. I'm watching that ball as it hits my racket. That's a pretty big deal. So now we know how to hit the shot. A couple of things that you guys need to know. Um, just like in baseball, we have a strike zone in tennis. And the strike zone for us is basically from our elbows down to our knees, okay? It can be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but that's the general area. The difference between tennis and baseball is that in baseball, the pitcher has to throw the ball into the strike zone. And in tennis, our opponents are trying to hit it out of our strike zone, okay? So what do we do to fix that? Well, we move our feet, okay? The better you guys move, the better you play tennis. I absolutely promise you this, okay? This will not change for the rest of your tennis playing career. Footwork, footwork is absolutely everything, okay? The better you guys move, the better your feet prepare, the better balance and the better position you're gonna have for each one of these shots, right? You're gonna be able to get that ball into your strike zone with good balance, good position, and you're gonna be able to hit a good shot, okay? As we progress, let me back up a little bit. Yes, I can stick my racket out and get the ball over, over the net and into the court, but as we progress, that's not gonna be a very good shot, and my opponent is gonna be able to take advantage of that, okay? So it's super crucial, you guys, right now, put it in your head, you gotta move in this game, right? If you hit 10 shots, you should be breathing heavy. You should be a little bit tired, right? If you play a match, you should be sweaty. You should be tired. You should be ready to take a break, okay? Don't leave the tennis court and be like, well, I didn't play very well, and be standing there thinking I could go run a marathon right now. You should be tired. This stuff takes work. The better your footwork is, the better your shots, the better tennis, and the more enjoyment you're going to have. Now, movement isn't always as easy as just move to the ball, right? In tennis, it's a little trickier because we don't always run to the ball. We actually shuffle a lot of the times, okay? Um, so a lot of this is going to be, right, I'm here in what we call ready position. That's another one that's in our terminology section, so look that up. But I'm here in ready position, right? The first thing I want you guys to do is turn, right? You're going to turn just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot, but turn to kind of get yourself set up. So if I'm back here... I'm ready to go, I turn just a little, and then I'm just gonna kinda shuffle and adjust based on where the ball is, right? So if I've got a ball over here, right, I'm gonna toss it, and when you guys are doing this, when you guys are practicing at this beginner level, I want you, it'd be great if you've got a partner over there, but really just start with a ball in your hand. Just drop it out there, toss it, because you can completely control that ball, and it's a lot easier to have success that way than with somebody else hitting the ball at you. So it's a good way to start. You don't have to do it that way, but it's a nice way to, to just kind of get a beginning into this and kind of feel a little more confident hitting that shot. So if I've got a ball over here, right, I've got to get set. I'm going to turn. I'm going to move and shuffle, step, and swing, okay? So we'll do it with the ball and see what it looks like. Turn, shuffle, step, swing. Okay, so that's really it, you guys. Make sure that you're getting a good little turn to initiate your swing. I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to move first, right? Move and then stick your racket out because it's going to get all kind of flippy floppy, right? So it's a little turn, shuffle to the ball, step and swing.
Okay, another tip you guys, another thing that you guys are going to have to work on that you're going to have to know is how to track the ball. Okay, ball tracking, again, another terminology thing, check it out, but ball tracking, basically what it does, what it's talking about is you reading the ball coming to you in the court. Spins, heights, speeds, angles, all that stuff comes into play when the ball is coming to you, just like you're playing catch, right? If we're playing catch, we want to try to catch the ball in a, in a good, comfortable spot. And that has to do with tracking. You've got to see what the ball is doing in the air. So it's super, super important that you guys practice that as you go on. And that can be as simple as literally going out and playing catch in the backyard, right? Just toss the ball back and forth and you will learn to see and track the ball a little bit better. Ball tracking is tricky. It's probably the hardest thing for new players because there are so many variables, especially on the tennis court. There are, there's spins, there's pace, there's height, there's angle, there's stuff on the court that makes the ball bounce funny. All that stuff comes into play. So give your guy, you know, give yourself uh, a little bit of a break when you're learning that, right? Be good to yourself. Don't go crazy if you're not getting it right away. But be diligent and practice it now and again. Because um, the, the better your ball tracking, the better you'll be able to move to the ball and the better you'll play. Okay, another tip, you guys. We touched on ready position. Make sure you guys are actually active. Don't give me this kind of hanging out, hang dog stuff, right? If you look over here. That ain't ready position. That's, that's not it, right? We want to be up, active, ready to go. It's almost like if you were jumping rope, okay? So I'm gonna be here, and what that does for me, you guys, is it helps me move better to the ball. I'm a little bit quicker to get that first step so that when I actually move, right, if I'm here, I move, and I'm balanced and I'm in control versus flat-footed when I move, right, when I move, you guys can see I'm already off balance. That's not gonna be a very good shot, is it? So stay active, keep an active, ready position. Yes, it's another term in the terminology section. There's a lot of them in this intro video. Um, there's a lot of stuff to know. Watch this a couple times. It may, um, you know, a lot of it can be overwhelming. There's a lot of information here. It'll get easier as we go back because all this big stuff won't be covered. Um, so maybe watch this one a couple of times, go through the terms, all that good stuff. All right, you guys, so that's really it. Turn, step, swing. Move your feet, shuffle to the ball, ready position, ball tracking. I know it's a lot, but practice this stuff. Really, again, watch this video a couple of times because it will come into play. Um, when you guys are out here practicing, there's three things I want you to focus on in this specific order, okay? First thing first, I want you guys to hit that ball right in the center of the strings. That's the biggest thing, right? I don't care if the ball goes in, not yet. I don't even care if it goes over the net, not yet. We've got to make sure that we're hitting the ball in the center of the strings because what that means is that we're making good contact with the ball. And the better our contact, the better our feel, the better our feel, the more we can adjust what's going right and wrong with our swings, okay? So when you're out here, you're making those swings, center cut, hit that ball right in the center of the strings. And what that means is keeping your eyes down and on the ball as you hit it. So that's job number one. Job number two, get it over the net, okay? I don't care if it goes 50 feet long. Rule is this, if, if you hit the ball and it's gonna go long, I can still, as your opponent, put a racket on. I might still play it. But if you hit it in the net, not the case, is it? Okay, so job number one, center cut. Job number two, get it over the net. Job number three is actually get it into the court. Okay, so those are your three pieces. Make sure you're doing well with job number one before you move to job number two. Make sure you're doing well with job number two before you move to job number three. Don't get ahead of yourself. That's it, you guys. We are ready to go. This is our lesson one, our level one, if you want to call it that, beginner forehand ground stroke, okay? So what we're working on, what we, what we learned today, and what this will give you is a little bit more confidence to be comfortable with this shot and to back up and play and rally in a pretty consistent way. Um, and that's really what we want. Again, it's about consistency. It's about not making errors, not making unforced errors. So through this and part two and part three, you guys should develop a good confidence in your forehand ground stroke and, and be pretty comfortable getting out here and playing with whomever, okay? And that's really the idea. You guys don't need to pay me 60 to $100 an hour to find out whether or not you even like the game. Use this video, use the other videos, get out there and practice on your own, and that way you can determine, hey, this is actually a pretty cool game. I want to play this some more. Um, and if that's the case, we've got plenty of other videos for you guys, uh, plenty of other stuff. So use this stuff, practice this stuff, get out there. I tell you, this game is so, so good, and you can play it till the day you die. But remember, you guys, I 
I, I'm your pro now, right? You don't have to pay me $100 an hour on the court. You can just come here and use me for free. So if you guys go out and you try this and, and you're finding, well, this is a little tricky or this doesn't work, or hey, this was really great, but I want to ask this question, whatever. Or if you just want to say, hey, it was really cool, thanks. Do that. Send me comments, send me questions, find out what's going on, and let's do this together, right? I'm here, I'm gonna answer your questions and your comments, and we can build this game together and really, really enjoy it, okay? So that's it. You guys have got lesson one down. Make sure you guys practice this and that you're comfortable with all this stuff before you go back and up to lesson two. The test is that, I'm gonna show you guys, I'll link this, I'll put it in a different one, but we're gonna do a video all we're gonna do is we're gonna to hit to a target. And what I want you guys to do is to be able to be comfortable. If I, gave you, if I gave you 10 balls that you could hit it within maybe six or 10 feet of that target, six out of those 10 times, okay? That's gotta be your deal. So do that before you move on back to lesson two, okay? Send me your questions, send me your comments. I appreciate you guys, I'll see you next time.